everybody out there in Facebook land. I'm Eric Tate alongside my co-host Nick Lacapo here for the Penguin Magic Top 20. We are counting down the top 20 tricks of the week right here at penguinmagic.com live on Facebook. Thanks so much for you guys for tuning in. Nick, you ready for a great show? I'm ready. This is uh, the most exciting day of the week. It's the only reason I get dressed up anymore, I swear to God. <laughs> this is, uh, I think, the first thing that we should address for all of our viewers is look at our amazing desk. Yeah, I, we feel more professional. We really do. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this, this show is really, uh, it's really <laughs> moving up in the world. <laughs> We're doing things, at least just keeping us busy, right, yeah. at this point. Yeah, so last week we added the projector. Uh, yep. This week we've added the desk. There might be a few other bells and whistles you guys will notice uh, in and around the screen. I think you guys are really going to like this. Yeah. Uh, Nick, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, what else has changed this week well, because so, yeah, you've, been, well, you've been money balling the top We tonight. have been. So for those of you out there that visit Penguin Magic, you know that on the side we have the top 20 tricks of the day. Uh, so I we've kind of been monitoring this on a weekly basis and gathering what tricks have had the most staying power throughout the week and collaborating them into a list. It's very, it's very uh, Difficult to explain. There's spreadsheets. There's math. There's yeah. there's a lot of uh, things that I even I don't understand. To We're doing out. some like pretty serious trigonometry to be able to get this going. Yeah. So uh, it's not the exact twenty that you would see on the site right now. Yeah. Right. It's the best twenty tricks of the week. Yeah. I think it's important that we note that because we tried to do the top twenty tricks like right as they yeah. happen, and it changes so much it that does. it was way too difficult. Yeah. I mean, because people were emailing us. They were like, hey. You said number one was this, and it was actually this. Right. Uh, so there's a few things that have changed. For example, uh, Bolted has fallen out of the top 20. But that we, was there for the last two weeks. And we really like Bolted. We mm -hmm. thought there was some neat stuff there. Uh, Parlor, uh, I think Parlor Tricks by Morgan and West. Yeah, that is popped getting, up for the first time in the top 20 this week. It yeah. was there for a couple days and then just kind of faded away. I think what happened there is that uh, Parlor Tricks was one of those. It, it's a book by Morgan and West. Really fantastic book. I own a copy of it, and uh, it was recently reprinted uh, or a, a second printing has gone out and okay. so I think what happened was a bunch of people grabbed it and, uh, and it popped sense. in there. And then of course the uh, blank face bicycle deck uh, was in the top 20 this week. Uh, but that was in there for kind of an interesting reason. Yeah, we're going to get to that a little bit later. It, it actually relates to a trick that is in the top 20. Just a couple other, couple other shout outs. Punch 2 by R. Paul Wilson showed up in the top 20 a little yep. bit this week. Pocket Daydream, which has been there for many weeks, was number one a couple weeks ago. Mm. That fell out of the top 20. Uh, Initial Shock, Ambitious Coin, and Monkey in the Middle all uh, saw some time, but they didn't make the top 20, which is what we're uh, here to talk about. No, we're going to move into the top 20 this week, and let's kick it off with number 20. Uh, this is Artful Deceptions by Alan Kronzek. This is a really fantastic book that he put out a few, a few years ago. Uh, it's a hardcover book, 94 pages, nine tricks. What's really interesting in this is that Alan has gone in-depth in the uh, the different uh, routines that he's got in there. It re really goes into a lot of his thoughts about scripting and the way he goes through that. Uh, Alan, uh, a lot of people may or may not know this, but in addition to being a magician, he's actually a New York Times bestseller. Uh, I did not know that. We ac yeah, we actually had him here uh, back in uh, last year. Uh, we filled out, uh, we uh, filmed a couple of tricks with him, and actually I think one of the reasons that Artful Deceptions is in the top 20 this week is because uh, later on in the top 20 you're going to see Alan return uh, with a download that actually came out this week. Uh, but Artful Deceptions is really neat. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my favorite portions of the book is that there is a really interesting variation on the business card move. Do you know the business card move, Nick? Which which one? Like the through the fist? Uh, the... No, no. It's the one that you use to uh, force a card in the middle of a deck. So oh, you have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, where you have somebody like take the business card yeah. and put it in the deck and then there's a move that you do to flip over the business card and that allows you to get to a force card and Alan has a really unique take on it in the book that I really like that was one of my main takeaways from the mm. book. Well I, I haven't so I'm only actually familiar with the things that Alan so Alan mm. was here uh, I don't know what's that last year or something? Yeah yeah it was a little late in the year like in the autumn. Yeah and he filmed we filmed some downloads with him one of those downloads like you mentioned is in the top 20 in a little bit. And so I'm only familiar with the, well, I guess it's a little bit of a teaser that there's a couple, maybe a couple more downloads coming. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so those are the only tricks I've seen from the book, which mm -hmm. is why this is in the top. I wasn't aware of the book, to be honest. Yeah, it was, it was a really interesting book when it came out. I mean, it, it was, it's a smaller book. It's a very yeah. slim book. But, 94 uh, pages. I yeah. think Andy Gladwin uh, edited the book, and, and Andy does a really nice job mm. with, uh, with all of his editing. I did really, like, it really stood out when he was mm -hmm. here, because I saw him present a few things that that the thing to learn from Alan mm -hmm. is his approach to scripting and presenting 
unique twists and presentations on magic. Yeah. As far as I could tell, the tricks are classics. Yeah, for I'd the most say part. that. I think a, a number of the tricks that he does are classics, but I would say a few of them are variations on something that other people uh, have put out uh, or published. And Alan does a really great job of crediting whenever he does uh, a variation or an update to somebody else's effect. Uh, and it's really neat. Uh, yeah, it's, no. it's, it's fantastic. It looks but like a great, for, for the price of the download and the price of this book, it's only $15. That's what is really amazing, is that this book is only $15. Bucks. Right, it's, only $15. It's bucks. a super good book for, yeah, for what it is. Get the download, get the, grab the book, and you know. And I think I heard the bell there, uh, so we're going to have to move yeah, on. Yeah, we'll move on to uh, number 19. Number 19 is new this week in the top 20. This is Replicate by Chris Rollins and what this uh, what this instant download is is a drawing duplication effect. Essentially, if you're not familiar with it, you ask your spectator to draw a picture on a piece of paper. You don't look at it. That picture goes into an envelope so that there's no way that you can see what it is. But yet, somehow through mental divination, you are able to draw the same picture that went into the envelope. Uh, Drawing duplications are really strong. I mean, I know you know this. Oh, yeah. What did you think about the, uh, what, what is being presented here? Tell, tell us a little I bit about it. I think what is really being presented is a very unique way of getting a peek. Uh, it doesn't involve an impression device. It doesn't involve a wallet. Uh, this is just something that you can do with envelopes and some pieces of card. It's, it's not quite impromptu, uh, but what it is is something that will allow you to get uh, a peek on a, a secret a secretly written or drawn thing. Uh, so it's presented as a drawing duplication, but really you could use this in order to get a peek on a word or a number or any number of things that are written down. If it was like a list, you could do something with that. Uh, this is, it's got its roots um, in uh, something, the two envelope test by Bob Cassidy. Yeah, yeah, you can find this in uh, The Artful Mentalism of Bo Bob Cassidy, which mm -hmm. is a crazy book if you've never read that one. That one's mm -hmm. such a good read. Um, so yes, it, what I really like about it is the fact that everything's self-contained in an envelope. Yeah. It's kind of, even, even Chris in his presentation of this, and I wish, this is one of those tricks that I wish we had a better like video demonstration of it on the site. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we can, we can figure out yeah. as we go through all these. Is maybe I'll have a chance to upload the video. Like I don't have enough work to do already. But anyway, <laughs> um, because the full presentation is really interesting. You, you're just laying the envelope on the table mm -hmm. and everything you need is inside of it. Your pencils, yeah. your little pieces of paper, because this is what you're going to need to do the trick. You're yeah. going to need an envelope, you're going to need a smaller envelope, some pieces of card, and some markers and some pencils. But good news is, if you're a mentalist, you already got all that yeah. stuff. This is, you, <laughs> right? could go to a station, you can go to Staples, an Office Depot, Office Max, pick yeah. up everything you need to do this trick. And, and probably everyone who's watching this at home who's thinking about getting Replicate from Chris is, is probably got everything they need to, yeah. to get this it's handled. It's a really great handling. If you know anything about Chris Rollins, he's yeah. a great thinker when it comes to uh, all, everything that he does, every download. Yeah, so put, putting together uh, a way to get a peek on a drawing duplication in such a nice, neat, contained system them without any special gimmicks or weird slits or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, uh, is, there's no gimmick envelopes here. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that that's what we really that's need to stress here. That's a great point to, to put out there, yeah. yeah. Is there, the, the, the envelopes are not gimmick. There's a lot of different uh, things like this where you would get the envelope and you would have to do all kinds of different things to it, but you don't have to do that with this. With, with like anything in mentalism, it's, it's, you just want to find the method that works right for you. Uh, you probably have ways of doing this already if you've mm -hmm. done anything like this, mm -hmm. but you, uh, maybe you should take a look at it. I think it's only ten bucks, uh, nine ninety-five. Yeah, yeah, it's only ten dollars. I think, so. unfortunately, I think we have to move on. Okay. Uh, I didn't hear the, the bell on that one, but uh, we're trying to stick to the timer this week so that we uh, we actually <laughs> stay on task and on target. Uh, we're going to move on right now. We are going to talk Final Destination. Uh, this is a trick by Paul Gordon. This is a really interesting sort of uh, uh, think of a card trick that uses a principle that a lot of people are probably already familiar with, uh, but even though you're familiar with it, it's gonna be well worth it to look at the way Paul Gordon has dressed this up. Uh, I don't really wanna say the principle that people are already familiar no, I, with. Yeah, I don't think we can say the, the, the trick name that it's rooted in, Yeah. but really what happens here is that you're, you just have your spectator, uh, they're just gonna think of a, a number and you're, there's gonna be a card selected mm -hmm. and you're just able to divine the card. 
basically. Yeah, so what it looks like is that they are... Yeah, it's uh, actually kind of hard to talk about without talking about it, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're going to get a secret number and they're going to set some cards down and the number that they think of, they're going to look at it and you're able, to, you're able to know what that card is. But you're not only able to know what that card is, there's an interesting kicker that I don't want to reveal uh, for those of you who haven't bought the trick just mm -hmm. because it's, it's a good kicker. Uh, Nick did it for me before the show and I was not really expecting yeah, the Yeah, I kicker. can tell you were just kind of going along with it. You're like, yeah. okay, okay, I know what this trick is. And then at the very end, you turn it over and you're like, oh, okay, now yeah. I understand why it's a, you the, know, why it's a thing. The thing to really know about this is that the trick is not only self-working, but there's no gimmicks involved. No, and no. when we say no gimmicks involved, we don't even mean like magician's wax or little bits of tape or anything like that. Like you are really getting a self-working trick. Yeah. Uh, this is not necessarily something you're going to want to set up on the fly, which is one of those things. Well, that but you, the, the thing is, is that on the download, Paul shows you all of this. Yeah. And in fact, if you do watch the present, the, the demo, it's the first thing he says. Now you've shuffled these cards, is that mm -hmm. correct? There's this minor setup that goes along with this, right? Yeah. But he does cover all of that in the download. I, yeah, you're right. I, you, you caught me before I spoke incorrectly, is that uh, there is, I, there is a setup to this, and it's going to take a little bit more work to get it done on the fly, but Paul covers that, uh, absolutely. You, which, is, which is the most important part. Yeah, and he's a fantastic uh, teacher of magic. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Every download that he puts out is uh, really, really good. Uh, 21 minutes, of, what else would I wanted to mention about this? It was something spe specific that I had about this. Oh, we talk about this a lot, and that is we forget how good oh. old card tricks can be. Yeah. Um, and this is a great example of, Pocket Daydream was what we're, we've been talking about this, right? Yeah, exactly. We forget because we know this trick. Yeah, we, we but we don't know it. And <laughs> it's it's anytime you end up with some of these older tricks, I find myself going back to them over and over and over Absolutely. again. Especially when someone brings in a sort of new variation and a new handling, which is exactly what, what Final is. Destination yes. is, where you go, oh. This old trick that it's rooted in was actually good, but so the problem good. was the way it was presented made it really awkward to get into. It didn't make a lot of sense. And so what Paul's done is taken something that's old and refresh it in a way that makes it more palatable for a modern audience. Yeah, no, it's a great download. Final Destination number 18. Uh, probably be, it was there the entire week, so uh, it's a good one. Check that one out. Uh, let's move on, though. Yeah, number 17 is Borrowed Card Stunners by Larry Haas. This is a collection of five different card effects. Uh, you're gonna, uh, five tricks. My way out of this world, one card, one card only, pure magic, the friendship game, and intuition test. These are five single tricks uh, that were all downloads themselves that we filmed with Larry when he was here filming his Penguin Live act. All of these tricks use a borrowed shuffled deck in use. The interesting thing about that is that it's not just a borrowed shuffled deck in use. The deck doesn't even need to be complete. No. I mean, what's really nice is that you could go to like your local, uh, well, not right now, but you could, but you could theoretically go over to your friend's house uh, or you know your local bar and just be like, hey, I'll show you something with that deck of cards over there. You don't need to know anything about the deck. Right. It, it really is. It's nice because there's some of these self-working tricks that we look at and we go, oh, this is great, but they sort of rely on principles of a deck being a full deck, yeah. or you've got to know that. And none of these things uh, involve that. No, not at all. Uh, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll actually say here, uh, the my way out of this world is one of the first things in this pack of tricks, and I really like it, because Larry took two well-known versions of out of this world that each had different principles in play, and he combined those principles. And it's one of those things that, when you, when you look at it and you go, oh, this is stupid stunningly obvious that these two <laughs> things should have been put together, but it took Larry going from this particular person's version, version this particular <laughs> person's version of Out of This World and this particular person's version Out of This World and identifying what the good bits were. Yeah, and, I love Larry's yeah. approach to stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. It's also, it's really important to note that what he's doing also is teaching you scripting, which yeah. I know is something we just talked about with Alan Kronzek, but I feel like Alan and Larry are sort of cut from the same cloth yeah, when it comes to point. that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, every, when I was first introduced with Larry, I instantly realized he was somebody I wanted to learn more about the way that he approached writing a trick. Yeah. Uh, because he's very, like, regimented. He's a direct student from Eugene Berger. Hey, he might make an appearance later <laughs> on, uh, uh, on, uh, on the show. You're going to watch all the way to the end yeah, to see the Eugene the Berger the Easter egg. Eugene Berger. I didn't think <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, borrow card stunners. The other big thing to take away here is all five of these came out separately, all five tricks. They were all $10 a piece. Yeah. However, if you buy the borrow card stunners set, you get 
five for uh, twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's, so it's not quite. Uh, I feel like this is our this is our deal of the week. It is the deal of the week. Yeah, it was the deal of the week last week. One of these last days week. we're gonna get a graphic that goes ding ding ding. Yeah, maybe next week. But <laughs> it, it will go back up to fifty at some point. It yeah. just will. So uh, if it's in the top twenty, it's uh, still a good deal. So I would I would definitely take a look at that one. Uh, if you do card tricks, which is just about all of us, yeah. right? So. <laughs> yeah. If you're watching this and you don't do card tricks, uh, why are you watching? Oh, that was the bell. I heard the bell. Oh, oh there's a bell. Yeah. That's right. I heard the bell that okay. time. Let's move on to number 16. This is Manifest uh, by Vortex and Danny Weiser. This is a fantastic approach to confabulation that happens on a luggage tag. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this was actually, this was your I'm going to buy it. This yeah, week. so at the end of each show, we say what we're going to buy. Yep. And I, yeah, I was going to buy this. Uh, did you buy it? I bought it. You bought it? I bought it. I let's, brought let's it. Let's take a look I at it. I brought it. it. Oh, it's, it's, look, it's, it's inside I was, our magic desk. I was, I was expecting it to be really good. Uh, so yeah. here, um, the, the, uh, the effect is essentially uh, a confab. You ask the audience for some information. Mm -hmm. And you're writing it down to keep track of what the information is. And then, uh, so the, the classic presentation is you'd ask somebody where they want to go on a trip, yeah. who are they going with, and what are you doing there. Mm -hmm. And then at, you say, well, that's funny. In this envelope back here, you open it up. I wrote down, I will travel to Hawaii with yeah. Brad Pitt and whatever. So it matches. That's kind of the, the, the confabulation routine. The, what this has changed is it's gotten rid of the envelope, right? Yeah, that's the thing that's really nice about this is that the envelope, you used to have to justify the envelope, whereas this is now a luggage tag, so it sort of hides in plain sight. And I'll be honest, while you were out doing some stuff, I opened up the package and played with the gimmick. Really and we're, nice. we're not going to expose the gimmick. No, right no, here. but I'll show it to you. Oh, but we are going to show it to you. It's really well made. It's really well made. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the creators out there that have played with Confabulation, I feel like they've tried to figure out what kind of thing can we put the, the, the reveal in, yeah. right? That's why we've had all these crazy prediction boxes mm -hmm. and envelopes and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that stuff, yeah. right? But this actually makes a lot of sense when it comes to the travel, like the dream travel trip, yeah. which is why on the video, it's taught by Paul Ron, I can never say his last name, Romani, yeah. um, who is the dream prediction guy, right? Yeah. Who kind of started the whole craze with everything. He loves this and he teaches you all the stuff. So anyway, the gimmick is, uh, Oh yeah, I can actually see in the chat here the Conjurers saying Manifest is fantastic. It really ab is. Absolutely. I'll Shout show you out the to the Conjurers. In a second, it comes with a notepad. Didn't have to. I mean, it's sized correctly for this, but you could use any notepad. Doesn't yeah. quite matter. You're going to get some tags. Uh, what, are we, what are we using here? The overhead? Yeah, we'll use, yeah, we'll let's use switch the overhead. Over the overhead. Um, so you guys can see it. You'll get some tags. Uh, and you get a bunch of them. These, mm -hmm. again, this could be anything, so yeah. you could print those at home. That so looks like about the same size as like a Delta or a Southwest luggage tag. Yeah, Like, no, I don't I know mean, for certain that you could swap in a major airlines tag, but it looks like pretty well the same size. They're just, you know, it's just cards of paper, but it's nice that they, they included it, right? Yeah, yeah. But here's, the, uh, here's the actual gimmick. I don't have mm -hmm. the, uh, the tag on it yet, but it's, it's actual leather, mm -hmm. right? And there is a, you know, we were saying last week, it doesn't just magically materialize inside. We mm -hmm. all wish it would, but mm -hmm. uh, there, the way that you would load this is really good. Like, look, the, the loading mechanism is, is here. Yeah. I'm showing it to you. And the, the it, interesting thing, too, it. is that you're handling it, like, pretty roughly. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, you can, there's yeah. nothing, there's literally nothing to see. I'll, I'm going to load one of these in there so you can uh, see what it is. Yeah, just it's, do it I mean, the, the thing to really take away from this is that we didn't know a lot about it. Nothing. When, when, we, when this first showed up on the top 20 list. And so then we actually decided we wanted to buy it because I'm going to ask you a question at the end of this, yeah. which is, uh, actually, I'll even ask it to you now, is, uh, okay, so you've got it loaded here so we can see it loaded. Yeah, so that's what it would look like, it, yeah. you know, to get it out of there, it, it's, you know, it's going to be locked behind here and everything, mm -hmm. so you would reveal it to the spectator. So the, this, if this had the stuff that they, that they just merely named mm -hmm. five minutes ago written on there somehow, that would be amazing. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, it's great. So the real question before we move on, because uh, I, I see we're out of time on this trick, uh, the real question is you use luggage in your show yeah. for your case. So the question is, because uh, you were saying, I'm going to get it to see if this would go with my luggage. Yeah. Am I going to do it? The question is, are you going to do it? Uh, I want to. I really want to. I probably just used this one mm -hmm. originally. I, I really bought this to just see what the method was. Okay. Right, because I wondered if I could. My the luggage tags I have in my luggage are really nice, and yeah. I was like, man, that'd be it'd just be cool if I could use those. Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with this, um, but yes, 100%. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to use this. Mm -hmm. It's not even a question. 
Um, the only thing that I've seen pop up with people, uh, there's no palming with this. People have asked me that. Uh, what else did I write down? Oh, um, mm. and you can also load a playing card in here. Okay. Maybe in my multiple selection routine, maybe. Mm -hmm. And finally, the only thing I've seen is that people don't like the yellow. Okay. Um, it only comes in yellow. Yeah. I don't mind the yellow at all. Mm -hmm. I think it would be easier for your audience to spot if you're doing this on stage. Yeah. I'm not, this isn't the type of thing that I would do close up. You can. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in that case, you might not want like a yellow bag tag on your backpack. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. But for me on stage, yellow tag, yeah. it's good. All right. Go. Well, we are way over time well, okay, here. Okay, so, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll move on here. We, yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to stick to a time here. Well, uh, we had a prop to show you there, right? That's, yeah, so, that's fair. You know, I think that's on. fair. And Manifest deserves the love. Oh, I mean, no, it's really yeah, it was, uh, it's been in the top 20 now for two weeks, I think. So. All right. Uh, well, I think uh, number 15 is yours. Let's uh, Yeah, let's well, go so ahead. number 15, coming in number 15, has been here for a couple weeks now. This is My Friend George by my friend Kevin Bethay. <laughs> I knew you were going to go for that yeah, pun. Yeah, did I just do that? Yeah, we haven't done did. that the last two weeks. This, oh. is a, uh, this is a bill switch. This is a borrowed $1 bill. Fold it up and then unfold it, and you magically have a $100 bill. The amazing thing about this download is that it is done without a thumb tip. I know you're a big fan of this, and you just yeah. filmed with Kevin uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, actually, we filmed with Kevin right here. We did uh, the Penguin Live, and if you listen to the Penguin Magic podcast, which is on Apple, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, all the different major uh, podcasting services, Kevin was the podcast guest this week. He was the main event, is what we call it in the podcast, the big interview. Uh, and Kevin and I actually went into depth uh, on the podcast about how he came up with my friend George, adding all the little touches. And the very first time I saw it, which it was when he showed it to me at 4F, uh, which was kind of funny because he showed it to me and I was like, wow, it's a really nice build change. But I didn't understand how good it was until I was editing <laughs> yeah. the tutorial. Right. And it's so good. Yeah, this it's has so been my... Um there's been a few like quarantine moves I've been working on. Yeah. Been doing the one-handed shuffle. I kind of course. got that down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can't do it live. But, uh. <laughs> maybe next week if you guys bully Nick in the chat, maybe we'll get Nick to do a one-handed shuffle next week live. Oh, but uh, one of them has been uh, my friend George. Yeah. I've for you know, I swear every time I've done a stand-up show, I, I do Bill and Lemon, Bill and Fruit, almost yeah. every time. Every time I'm doing my uh, mm -hmm. my, my hundred dollar bill switch there, and I'm just Nick. When are you gonna learn a good yeah. <laughs> good tipless switch? You know, uh, this is it. This is the one to mm -hmm. learn. I think. Yeah. No, I I totally agree. And actually, I'm seeing a, a question in the chat here from uh, Saren Seriakin. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I apologize. Asking, uh, does it work with any currency? Uh, the answer is kind of. Um, I know that a lot of the different bill switches out there have difficulty with some of the polymer bills because it's a lot harder to get the creases and fold that money. Uh, Kevin doesn't really go into depth on teaching it uh, with uh, plastic money or, or, or polymer notes. Uh, that's not to say you couldn't, um, but I no. think it would be tough. I think mean, we're talking same size. Yeah, it, it kind of needs to be the same size. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I mean, you could do it with varying size bills. It, I, uh, in Canada, I think you could do this with, uh, I, I did a couple of $100 bill switches or bill switches with uh, Canadian currency when I lived up in Canada. They had different size currency, but it was paper money, so mm -hmm. it still kind of worked. <laughs> Um, yeah. It's a little difficult with the money being different colors. Uh, this is really a bill switch that is rooted in American currency because right. of the origins of it and the, the Kevin, what Kevin took and applied his different touches to. Yeah, I, I don't often think about that when, when you actually get to the final fold and the bills mm -hmm. actually switch, but they still don't know. Yeah. Right? I guess that's relevant in almost any $100 bill mm -hmm. switch. Yeah, it would kind of kind of yeah. stink if it was a different color. Uh, but let's talk about the fact that this had, comes with a scripted poem. Yep. Uh, which is an amazing thing to add to any routine, and uh, it's something that I don't often think about. To yeah, I heard the bell there, so we're gonna have yeah, to. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking about it. Okay, all right. No, <laughs> then uh, it's a good trick, yeah. all right? Like, I mean, it's a great download for ten dollars. You're gonna get a lot of lot yeah. of information. So yeah. Uh, moving on to number fourteen this week. This is Mental Dice by Tony and Ver uh, and Verdi. Uh, this is uh, a set of three dice that you get, red, blue, and white. They are uh, wirelessly connected to a small LCD screen that also is color-coded with those dice. Essentially, you roll these dice and whatever is showing on the face shows on the top of that screen. That screen can be hidden in your hand, in your pocket, in the bottom of a card box, uh, wherever you want that you can secretly see it. It is a fantastic little device. This has been in the top 20 basically <laughs> since we started doing these. Right? I take full credit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're 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 the main salesman for these now. But this is a really really nice 
Uh, I mean, I think we've we've hit this week after week after week. But right. the dice and the uh, LCD screen both come uh, with inductive chargers uh, so that you can charge them. Because it used to be with stuff like this, uh, the battery was embedded in there. And when it wore out, you had to send it back and get mm -hmm. it recharged, cracked open, put a new battery in. These is going to last you over and over and over again. You get three dice. Yeah. Three. Red, white, and blue, right? The, the dice look great. They, they look like real gamer dice. Yep, yep. The package uh, is super cool. Yeah, the package lights up and plays a tune. Yeah, it it's, really it, does. The package is a Dave Attell joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, so I, if you've not played with an electronic die, yeah. they are diabolical. They're crazy. Right? Just imagine. Here's a die, Eric. Put it in that cup. Shake it around. All right. Uh, and, and you can just know what number they're thinking of. But it doesn't yeah. have to be a direct mind reading trick of no. like whatever number they roll. Apply it to something else, like have them think of something on a list that relates to the number on the die. Or, you know, it comes with three yeah. die, one red, white, and blue. Yeah. So you can have three different people roll three different numbers and you can tell everybody what number they're thinking of. You know, and the other thing is it's, uh, it's they're accurate, which is something that yeah. like the, as electronics have gotten further and further into magic and we started using them more and more, it's getting more accurate. And that's mm -hmm. the important thing. I mean, I sort of think about my first forays into the smoke device world, and I would have all kinds of issues with remotes not firing or the the electronics like not quite doing what they're supposed to or yeah. there being too much of a delay. And man, mental dice is just like a real sign of the times. Where it really is. They're, now, they're not cheap. They're, uh, they're 295. But it is cheap. But compared to what they were yeah. and what you get, I mean, it I is mean, a steal. This same product three years ago is $1,200. Yeah, easy. Right, it's 1200 it's for one, twelve hundred for, for one, one die, die that you can't even recharge. Now that charge would last a long time, but mm -hmm. once it was up, it was up. You had to get it like redone yeah. for a, for a fee. And the other nice thing is uh, we're getting more range on these dice yeah. because these dice work forty feet away. Yeah, th this is a solid solid product. Yeah. Like mental dice, uh, I expect to be in the top twenty next week and yeah. the week after as well. And, uh, this is one of those at the end of the show when we ask like, "What are you gonna buy?" Yeah, like, we gotta buy I, I this. I keep Eric. getting closer and closer to buying this. Yeah, I really want this. Yeah. I really want. The only reason I have it, it's just it's just the price tag and yeah. you know the lack of spots to use it. Except for on this show, I guess. Right? Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, we we do host the best internet show <laughs> for magic. We should look. Do you see it's our not desk? Much of a bold claim. Do you see our desk? <laughs> Hey, yeah, maybe even next week there might even be something down here. We'll oh, see, we'll see. All right. all right, let's move on to number yeah, 13. Yeah, number, number 13. Going to number 13 is last week's number one trick, so fall in 13 spots, but that doesn't mean it's not good, is nope. the Penguin Monty. Penguin Monty is the three-card Monty that uses uh, a set of special cards. This allows you to... Uh, just completely control the game of three card money, make it look like you are uh, an absolute master street hustler, uh, except that you don't need to know any of those fancy hop moves or anything like that. What you're gonna get on this instant download is instructionals from Rick Lax, O's Pearlman, you're gonna get a PDF as well, and you're gonna get the special sets of cards. Eric is what this is, is the original Skinner's Monte Cards. Yeah. Is this the best way to do the three-card Monte? I think, I mean, honestly, no. The way I do three-card Monte <laughs> is the best way to do it, but I'm a little biased. No, this, I mean, as far as like packet trick three-card Monte's go, uh, this might be the best way to do it. So good. There, I can't think of a better one. I mean, there's, there's really some fantastic uh, different ways to do the Monte where uh, you're using like regular cards and stuff like that, but it's just... This is this really is the way to do it with gimmick cards. And yeah. in a packet trick, it's super, super fair. Yeah, this is, you know, if I, tomorrow, if I had to do, like, close-up on television, yeah, I'm probably doing this because it's actually completely bulletproof. There's nothing for the audience to see. Uh, it's not, not a, there's no moves or anything like that, but the way that these cards are gimmicked, if you're not familiar with them, it's absolutely, it, the way that these things are printed make this thing as clean as possible, yeah. right? Um, if you do get it, you're gonna get two sets of cards. So if you already know what this is, that's fine. But if you don't have your cards kicking around, oh, you yeah. should get some new ones because you, you know that this is a good trick. You're gonna get red and blue. Yeah, I think the other thing to note is that like, if you do Skinner's Monty, you mm. do it a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about this is that the cards get grimy. And yeah. so, and Skinner's Monty gimmicks are, they've come in so many different gaff decks. Oh, there's so, there's so, so many times that I've gotten Skinner's Monty, gone through it, and then the cards like either lose them or stain them, or they just like get too worn out to use. And so for, uh, what, is, what is this right now? Oh, it's, uh, $14.95 uh, yeah. to get those gimmicks, to have more of those gimmicks, even if you already know 
exactly how it works. Like yeah, it's, it it's worth it to have like a nice new clean set. And the, the final thing just to mention here is that uh, Rick's presentation is slightly unusual from what you might see. Yeah. He likes to actually use the bills in some of the displays, mm -hmm. which is cool. And he ends by, or shows you how he can end by displaying all that you have all red aces now. I think the other thing before time runs out that we got to say, say, Paul Vigil. We yeah, talk if, a lot if about you Paul. are going, if you're interested in getting the Skinner's three card Monty and learning more about those gas, and you want to see one of the best ways to do it, get Paul V Hill's lie back because he does a dynamite version of it that is just so clean and so wonderful and just so Paul. Yeah, yeah. We uh, talk a lot about Paul. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's kick it down to number twelve. This is the premium decks. Oh, uh, man. These this really this covers a whole wide range. Yeah, this of stuff. is a, this is a segment that's going to be here every week. Yeah, pretty much. The the premium decks, and so largely what we're talking about right now is the Penguin Maiden Mark decks and the Bicycle Elites, as well as now the Tally Ho Elites and any of the other premium decks that we have out, like the Purple Jerry's Nuggets. Uh, but I think what we should do right now is just get into the Mark deck, because I think we might have some people, I'm seeing uh, a number of people here that we, we may not have seen this before, but uh, Mr. Popo, if we could go to the overhead, and uh, let's check this out. Let's zoom in here uh, a little bit on this. These are the, the marked cards, and the really nice thing is that they are marked six ways from Sunday. They're literally marked six ways from Sunday. They're marked here, they're marked here, they're marked here, 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 and here. This is the Ten of Spades. I'll throw a, a Two of Hearts uh, right next to it. Again, all marked in the same place. Uh, this is a really bold marking system. It's almost impossible to miss it. Um, and I know every time magicians see these, they always say, hey, uh, I can see those marks. How does your audience not see the marks? Uh, to be frank, I use these cards on Penn & Teller Fool Us. And I've heard I, of that show. I got a lot of different comments about my routine, but no one noticed that I used the marked cards. No, no. Also, they come on the double crush stock. Uh, they're traditionally cut, so yeah, they farrow nicely. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a, a array of features that these yeah, decks... Are, anytime uh, you full, get... Yeah, full art box. Uh, this is uh, really important. So this box has been in my clip for a while, but you know how you, with the uh, with the other card, with the uh, like drugstore cards, there's like an ad on the back. This is the full art, so if you keep the cellophane in your box, you you know, all of the different things yeah, you can do. Yeah, there's not going to be a seal at the top. Yeah, yeah. Not, not sealed unless there's a couple of different premium decks that we have uh, that, that do come with a seal, but the seal is to notify you as to what kind of deck yeah, it is I believe if you're aware strippers, of the system. Our stripper decks come with the seal for the most part. Look, like I put, basically, we've been talking about the premium decks every week. Yeah. We have a, a large assortment of different decks that we offer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's so many different features of all of them. I put them all down on this piece of sheet here. Yeah. Piece of sheet? Is yeah. that what just The said? pizza sheet. The yeah. pizza sheet. And uh, every week we're going to try to figure out a, the best way to talk about our decks of cards. Mm -hmm. But the thing that, w I, I, the thing, going out in, in, in to the expos and the conventions, which we sorely miss, the thing that I found the most is a lot of people didn't understand why they need 12 decks. Yeah. Of, of cards. Like they think, I'm going to buy a Mark deck, let me buy one. Yeah. Why, why do I need 12? Mm -hmm. Well, you need 12 because it's a better deal, number yeah. one. You'll be getting them for $5 a deck as opposed to 10. Yeah. Number two, the reason that these are so amazing is because it can be your everyday deck. Yeah. You can sign these, you can tear them up. If you got 12 decks, you just don't care as much. It they cost about the same as a regular deck. I, it was a couple of years ago when the Penguin Mark deck came out, and you and I were hanging out at a bar. We used to, before we worked together, we used to go out for dinner and drinks a couple, couple, Remember those days, couple yeah. nights a month. And uh, you threw one of these decks at me, and you said, hey, check it out, it's marked. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I really like the markings, and it feels good. And then uh, I, I'll never forget this. Uh, Nick uh, picks up his drink and goes, guess how much they are? And, uh, and I was like, I don't know, $20, $25, and he goes, five. Five, five. I was so cool. Mm -hmm. I was so cool. Yeah, it was, it, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm sold. This well, is my deck. Well, yeah, Mark decks before these were 30 25 yep. 30 $40. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember keeping mine in, that was the only deck I kept in my Porper clip back in the days. I didn't want to make sure I screwed it up. Uh, we can answer yep. questions about the premium deck throughout the show or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I think you know maybe we'll take a break after ten. I think we've gotten a couple of uh, yeah, questions in from email. We could probably hit too. Uh, but so uh, before we move on from the uh, the premium decks, I think that there's one thing that we really need to talk about with the premium decks, and that is the the Jerry's Nuggets. The purple Nuggets are coming out soon, and uh, there are some Gilded Edge Jerry's Nuggets that are sold out, and they're super cool. And we are going to use this show to bully Kevin Relic into sending us his personal Gilded deck yes. because he didn't get us one, so that we can show it to you guys. Uh, so please, 
just flood Kevin's inbox with DMs mm -hmm. about how he needs to send us <laughs> the Gilded Edge decks. Because we deserve it. All right, number is 11. <laughs> Number 11 this week uh, was in the top 20 last week, uh, and this is an independent uh, production called InstaForce by Mustafa Burjawi. I, I always mess up his last name. Sorry, Mustafa. This is an amazing uh, magician. I believe he lives in Egypt, and this is an incredible way to force anything on Instagram and some other platforms as well. Uh, it's a way your spectator can swipe up, scroll through certain posts or accounts, and you are able to force them to stop on the information that you want. Uh, Eric, you have been playing around with this a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I've done this sort of like in some video chats with my family, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting because you're not buying an app, you're buying a method, yes. which is really important to know about this. Uh, you, there's so many of these, there's so many great magic apps out there. I can think of one off the top of my head that you and I use all the time, mm. but you're buying an app. Yep. And the really nice thing that Mustafa is selling here is, is a method. And that, that's really important to know is because you could do this with anybody's phone because it's, it's not on your phone. What Mustafa has done is taken a really great way to force something on Instagram and he's put it on your spectator's phone. So you can borrow your spectator's phone, go to a random Instagram account, celebrities account, do this with Obama, do it with, uh, uh, with uh, Will Smith, uh, maybe uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, you Ryan do Schlutz. It, Ryan Schlutz. You could go to Ryan Schlutz's Instagram page and force something from Ryan Schlutz. And you can choose what you're forcing on the fly, which is really neat. Yeah. Uh, he's done the work and he teaches you how to do it on both iPhone and Android, which is really cool. Mm. Uh, and it doesn't work just with Instagram, no. YouTube, SoundCloud. He's, yeah. got, he's got it figured out. Basically, he's got a Facebook uh, group yes. that's got like a lot more to it. Not yeah. only just you're, like... Yeah, you're getting access not just to a trick, but a community. A yeah. community of really smart, really clever people doing interesting stuff. And, yeah. and he's yeah. helping to really push that forward. Yeah, so you, when you get the video on, on Penguin, you're going to get like a, a very short download, to be honest. I think it's about 10 minutes long, where he just breaks down the, the, the raw handling of it, right? The Facebook group is where you can really start to explore some of the other ways yep. that they're doing this. They're doing this over video chat, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, just different ways of like doing it off the table, yep. in the spectator's hand. Like they're just really picking apart the different ways that you can approach this one force. Yep. It's almost like, it's like the Instagram double lift almost. Yeah. Can I say double lift on here? I think you say double lift like, Yeah, there. it's almost like that. Yeah, it's I can't stress how invaluable this effect great is. Little, and great little thing. The other thing that I think people should know is that, uh, so you and I are part of the team that also gets a lot of the submissions. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that uh, the person who uh, curates the submissions sent this to the team and they're like, what do you think of this? And when those come to us, it's never like, hey, I think this or I think this. It's just, here's the link, let me know what you guys think. Universally, the team was like, well, this is amazing. Yeah, it's great. This is dope. Yeah, like, yeah it's really let's, good. Let's check this out. Yeah, bravo to Mustafa. Uh, yeah. su support this product, because uh, this is, like I mentioned before, it's a sell we have uh, partner creations on Penguin. If you have a trick out there that, you've been tr that you'd like to release on, on the Penguin Magic platform, there's a, there's a, there's a be, you gotta be one of our partners. Mm -hmm. Mustafa's one of our partners, and uh, we're happy that uh, his effect has made it into the top 20 now for uh, two weeks now. Yeah, two weeks. And I expect it to be there next week yeah, as well. I, I think we're gonna be talking about Mustafa for a while, but let's move on to number 10. Well, let's take a, let's uh, see if we get some questions. We're, yeah. at, we're at the halfway point. Yeah. And uh, we'll, maybe, Maybe if we can find some questions, that would be good. But also, this might be fun to talk about as oh, well. Yeah, so I see a couple of different questions here. Uh, there's actually a couple of questions from me uh, that came through the uh, the inbox. Uh, Ripley's Magic says, uh, Eric, I love your Ultra Lucky Coin. and so cut to order. Can we expect any new releases from you in the future? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. I have other stuff that we're coming out with. Uh, I know that we just released my Penguin Live Act, which has got a bunch of work from me in mm -hmm. there. Uh, and uh, Yeah, if you like wooden ducks it's <laughs> and inflatable fish, you can check out. <laughs> uh, the other thing is I'm working hard with the Penguin team on some things that have, uh, that have been submitted to us that need uh, a little in-house in instruction. Right. Uh, so uh, a lot of those are going to have my touches on them as well. So I'm teaching other people's stuff as well uh, while working on it. Yeah, these days we, uh, we're working a lot on, uh, on other in-house projects. You know? uh, yeah, and then the other thing uh, that was asked about me was where did I get my doctor's bag? And the answer is Amazon. It was like 50 bucks. Uh, I searched doctor's bag on Amazon and it's, uh, I think it's a folio. 
Uh, my Instagram is at Eric Tate. That's at E-R-I-K-T-A-I-T. Uh, if you get my Penguin Live Act and you're wondering more about the doctor's bag that I use on stage, uh, you can just uh, message me on Instagram and I'll be happy to send you a link. Uh, but then uh, the other thing is, uh, I think we have a question from Mr. Popa uh, that came in. Uh, so maybe Popa Cam can come up? Oh yeah, well, maybe you introduce this guy. Yeah, maybe. so I think uh, you guys need to meet, this is uh, over here, uh, in the side here, this is Nick Popa. He is our uh, Facebook he's Live producer. He's in charge, really. Yeah, he's the Facebook <laughs> Live producer and director. Uh, and this question comes in from Kevin Sow uh, at uh, four, Kevin Sow 14. Uh, the question is, how can we make rubber band magic more powerful? And that is not something either of us can answer. That's <laughs> something you should answer. So uh, I really like rubber band magic and uh, one of the simplest answers for this, I think, is to get uh, the Rheinfleisch Rainbow Pack rubber bands. And the reason I say that is because the, the colors on the bands just make them pop more, and they, they just add some flair, some extra style to, excuse me, to your rubber band magic that I think uh, the regular tan rubber bands that you find at Staples just don't have the same effect. They blend in too much with your skin. So uh, definitely pick up the Joe Reinfleisch rubber bands from penguinmagic.com. I uh, got another question here well uh, that came in from the chat. Oh, yeah, that is, I think uh, Nick Pope has got some great takes I, on rubber band magic. I couldn't answer that question. No, it's, uh, he's, <laughs> he's the deal. Uh, I think we should keep Nick. No, Nick, get back up on the screen here because we got another, another question here. This is from The Amazing Sauce, and I think this is for all three of us. Uh, so let's start with you, Mr. Popa. Right. What effects do you always have on you, you when you go out? So a uh, couple things. One is uh, the key, or a uh, monkey, excuse me, uh, monkey by Jeff Price. I keep that on my keychain all the time. Oh, is uh, that the uh, that like linking ring, or the, where the ring moves from the spaces? Yeah, yeah. It's super cool. The keychain goes through the different spaces in the key. Uh, I always keep a deck of cards on me, my rings, uh, the necklace here. Just uh, I like to wear a bunch of wearable magic, uh, everyday magic props, stuff like that. How about you, Mr. Lacapo? Well, you know, my job requires me to never have favorite tricks anymore. <laughs> uh, I remember those days. Uh, I, I'm always on a heavy rotation of different stuff. So mm -hmm. right now, the yeah. tricks that I'm doing um, are Final Destination, mm -hmm. which we talked we talk about that one already. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was playing with the, the Alan Kronzak trick that we're going to be talking about a little bit. Yeah. But the one that I've... Uh, well, my friend George, I've been playing with the handling of that. But the trick that I've been really hot on over the last month or mm -hmm. so is a uh, old Lee Asher trick, three styling. Ooh. So I've been I've been carrying that around with me, three yeah. poker chips, a three fly routine. Which I do think, if you're looking for good close up magic that you mm -hmm. can do with a, some distance apart from people, I think mm -hmm. three fly is a great oh, great yeah. idea. Uh, there's a Daryl download on Penguin uh, that's really I think it's just called Daryl's three fly. I think it's called yeah. fantastic. So yeah. What about you? Uh, I got to say, well, I mean, a deck of cards is always on me, uh, but I'll, I'll be real honest with you guys. These days, it's the Razor wallet. Oh. Uh, I'm always carrying the Razor wallet with me. Just it, A, it's like my everyday wallet, but the other thing is I've actually, uh, so if you see me do that thing where I like switch my ID for someone else's. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. so I used to use the real man's wallet, uh, the, the Daryl Drawn, or sorry, the Steve Drawn real man's card to wallet. Uh, and I would uh, swap IDs with uh, uh, somebody uh, using sleight of hand, and then I would sneak their ID into the card area on the Steve Drawn's real man wallet. Uh, but I've got a new handling of getting their ID into the ID slot with the Razor wallet okay. while it's in my pocket. So, so the effect is, is that uh, I borrow someone's ID, I turn it over, I talk about the magnetic stripe. When the ID turns back over, it's no longer their ID, it's my ID, but I say, don't worry about it. I reach into my pocket and then I hand them my wallet and in my Razor wallet in the ID slot is their ID that I just borrowed from them. It's really strong, I've seen you do it before. Yeah, yeah. and just doing it with a Razor wallet just makes it that much stronger because it's, see, it's you know, the Razor wallet's like a real thin, I don't even, I, I see, mine's I made, over there, it's, it's over, yeah. I made the switch recently to you know the, this thing on the back of the yeah. phone. So uh, Popa, I, I think my wallet might be right there on the, uh, maybe, maybe you don't even need to bring it over here. You could uh, just, you could just show it to everybody on, <laughs> on Popa Cam. That's why we have that. Yeah. So, uh, hold it up there. Uh, yeah, that little ID slot yeah, right there. Yeah, Christopher. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I ended up uh, putting it up there. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a great little wallet. Yeah, um, fantastic wallet. Yeah, but it's, I mean, that's honestly something that I carry around with me. I mean, I've always got a deck of cards on me, but that wallet right there. Yeah. Is, uh, is what I do. And you know, you can do mentalism effects right. with it because it's peak wallet. Were there any other questions that came in? Uh, let's see. I think uh, one came in. Uh, Josh 
Birch, uh, let's see, uh, he's, or sorry, Josh Birch is our, hey, Josh, how's it going? He's our social media guy, he's monitoring the chat. Um, in, uh, Ingus Lee, Lingus E, I'm sorry, sorry if I'm butchering your name, interested to know what Nick's fave impromptu mentalism effect is. Uh, and Eric Smearden wants to know what my go-to uh, impromptu mentalism effect is. Well, impromptu uh, is a little tougher. I know the one yeah. that I do do the most would be, and I consider it mentalism, it's magic mentalism, yeah. would be Colossal Killer. Yeah. Uh, the presentation is I'm trying to read the person's mind. Mm -hmm. It's got a magic ending to it. It's a download that you get on Penguin. Yeah. I, uh, another great uh, for the times effect right now, mm -hmm. something that you can do with no props, no nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, impromptu mentalism, Man, I, I, I'm not sure I have anything that I perform. If I did, it would yeah. be with the Razor Wallet or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I, you know? I think my go-to impromptu mentalism thing is actually a Darren Brown thing that's in pure effect. It's, uh, it's the mental card force that he does where oh, he's man. like, I, and I never hit it, so <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm terrible at it. Yeah. I've gotten it, I can get it about, uh, I'd say like 30, 40% of the time, and when I, when I do get it, like I feel like a real witch. Uh, just, no, oh, you know, you know what it is, is uh, uh, my, well, it's not mentalism though. I was thinking of that like that crisscross force thing that I do. Oh yeah, which yeah, might yeah. be mentalism. Uh, yeah, I guess it's our. You know, how deep we want to go on this uh, yeah. rabbit hole here? Is it mentalism? Maybe, is I'll it think not? about it. I'll chew about it. If I come back, if I come up with something, I'll yeah. uh, spit it out in a bit. I did notice that Robbie Moreland, my buddy Robbie down in Orlando, said that Daryl coined the title Three Fly. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. So uh, well, neither did I. But you know, Robert knows more than us. So. He does. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you should check out anything that Robbie Moore. Oh, does. he's been making some fantastic YouTube videos lately. Have oh, you seen these? No, I haven't. I should check them out. He's uh, just only maybe put out three to five. Yeah. Uh, plug in Robert Moreland's YouTube channel here, but he's been working really hard on some really elegant sleight of hand uh, YouTube videos that you should definitely check out. Because uh, um, I mean, to me, Robbie is one of my close-up magic mentors almost like I'm trying to be like Robert Moreland uh, but we got any other questions in the uh, no I think chat? that's it let's move on uh, move Nick on. why don't you bring in number 10 number 10 oh man this trick no, <laughs> number 10 number 10 on the list is uh, the ultra lucky coin this is an effect by somebody named Eric Tate oh, some idiot more <laughs> oh my god that's and the contributions by some other idiot yeah and, um, <laughs> now this is an amazing uh, card effect based on a classic trick where spectator can place a poker chip anywhere on a spread of cards uh, effectively selecting a totally random card and that card is also happens to be the card that is printed on the back side of the poker chip. Mm. There is some other nuance here that's going on, but I figure I would allow Eric to explain that to us. You actually brought it with us. Yeah, we actually have one here. Uh, this is Ultra Lucky Coin. This is a little packaging that it comes in. Uh, I won't actually show you, but on the inside of this is uh, is a little intro to download that'll it'll tell you how it works. Uh, you get two poker chips uh, here. You get uh, uh, two different poker chips. One is uh, fine print, so they both say your card on the back. There's the fine print version uh, that my good buddy Nick Nicolacapo mm. actually helped me uh, design. And then there's the Ultra Lucky gimmick, which uh, says your card, and then you uh, turn it over, and when you turn it back over, it's transformed into a force card. A little Magic. tiny two of spades. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great uh, little piece. And uh, the cool thing is, is that it resets uh, just that fast. Mm. Uh, fortunately, we were on the overhead there, so you couldn't see it. Uh, the thing that a lot of people are, may know about me now, since we talk about this, is before I was in magic, I had a background in plastics, and so I worked with uh, the different people who were manufacturing this uh, to source plastics so that this would be super durable, not only aid in the performance of the trick, but also it would last you a lifetime. Uh, and that's that's really what is is going on here. Um, yeah, no, I saw John Armstrong lecture in probably 2010, yeah. and he had a great version of this. Uh, and, this, and again, well, I'll just kind of step through like what's being told. We'll go to the overhead there, Nick. Basically, what's happening here is that you're, you're going to spread the deck out, this, you're, and, and your spectator is going to place the chip somewhere on the spread. The presentation is that you eliminate every card that's not touching the chip, right? And then you do it again, so they would put it on another one. You can just basically get down to one card, and then in John's routine, uh, the card that they end up on the Jack of Hearts would also be on the back side. In, in this case, we have the uh, two of spades here, mm -hmm. but this would be a Jack of Hearts, yeah. right? In, in John's original routine. What we've done is you get an extra reveal where uh, 
where you get the, the joke, the your card joke. Would you be mm -hmm. impressed if your card was on the under, under underneath this poker chip? Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see what's uh, what's underneath. What's underneath? What's underneath? Oh, your it's uh, it's your card. It's and, uh, uh, yeah, that's a long way to go for a terrible joke. Okay. Yeah. But what about this card? Oh, well, that that right there is the two of spades. Well, that was my card. It was. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, so but I came up with this joke where I was saying, uh, you know, if you were pedantic, you could argue that the bet was at the end of the trick, your card would be underneath the chip, and this is the end of the trick, and the chip is here, and the card is here. That's why I don't gamble, and it transforms into the two of spades. Yeah, great and, trick. Uh, yeah, it, it's it, a great trick. It, it works out. I used to open with this trick at Theater Magic in Orlando, where I used to do magic shows at Universal Studios. The highest praise that I have gotten from this trick is that I found out is that Terry Ward uses this in chip. Disney World. At Disney World, yeah. and if there's anyone you want to be doing your magic, it's Terry Ward. Oh, so yeah. I'm super honored. The other nice thing I'll say is that John Armstrong, who, by the way, had a baby this week. Woo! Congratulations, John. Uh, John was very kind to let me uh, teach a number of his uh, tips and tricks for this particular uh, release, which was super kind of yeah, John. Yeah, John is so good. Uh, everything he puts out, uh, you should grab. If you yep. never see John... He's so Sorry, good. We can talk about John Armstrong for another two minutes, but uh, yeah. so I, I was at the castle one night, and somebody's like, "Hey, John Armstrong is about to do a private show downstairs." I'm like, "Who's John Armstrong?" And they just mm -hmm. laughed at me and took me down there, and yeah. then he continued to beat my brains out for for Super 20 good. minutes. So yeah. Uh, Mark uh, DeTulio says in here, uh, love Ultra Lucky, but want a different card on the chip so you can do the trick a second time. Uh, if you go deeper into the download, I talk about how to customize the chip if you want a different force card than the one that is on there. Um, I've actually, we've talked about releasing sort of like an upgrade pack so that you could put different yeah. force cards on there. That's why I like this show. Yeah. Because we can actually say like, man, it's really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, to, to commit to putting out another like that's why things don't come in red and blue all the mm -hmm. time anymore yeah because it's just it's just a hard thing to do yeah I should point out that uh, I actually manufacture these chips yeah. by hand yeah. uh, I do it while watching Game of Thrones so it's soaked in the <laughs> blood of the undead uh, but uh, there's actually there is uh, an area in the download where I talk about how to customize uh, the chip with the little card on there so if you wanted to get it yeah. with a different force card you totally could but uh, hey winter is coming so pretty, yeah maybe it's time for a new one yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we are considering doing another production run of this. Uh, our poker chip manufacturer has actually made producing these easier. And again, we're talking about if we do it again, we'll, we might do it in a different, uh, uh, we might do it with a different force card. But also, there is a possibility that I may release like an upgrade pack so that you can change. Yeah, it's, uh, a, tough, it's a tough one to figure out. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is really difficult. Um, it's so, uh, But the, the important thing to know is the two chips that you come with are both different force cards. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so you could do it a second time yep. uh, in theory. Just uh, the ending is a little bit different. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to number nine. Uh, this is Dino by Joe Reinflesh. Oh, Speaking of how to make your rubber band magic <laughs> more high impact, it's Joe Reinflesh. What you're getting here is a really fantastic download that teaches you how to pass a rubber band through your hand uh, and through a spectator's arm. Uh, this uses a really new principle in magic that is just amazing. Uh, I first saw Joe messing around with this at 4F, and he showed it to me, and it was... It's coming up, Eric. It was really crazy. Here comes the moment on the video screen here. Yeah, I mean, so all this stuff is good. This is a four-phase routine, so you're yeah. seeing different versions, but this yeah. one... This is the really cool part. You actually wrap it around, and there's no, like, hidden wraps. There's no... <laughs> There's, it, it's not like, oh, you're like, you're doing this, and then you're secretly holding here, but also it's a third rubber band that no one knows about. This, you legitimately wrap it around, and people can look at it from top, bottom, left, right, up, down. It's amazing. And then you go, and it passes right through their hand. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's a miracle. It really is. I mean, this is as close to actual magic yeah. as there is, right? Especially because the thing when I first saw that clip of the... the going around their wrist. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Joe must be doing one of those Joan Ryan fleshy things underneath the guy's yeah. wrist. You know, I don't do a ton of rubber band magic, but mm -hmm. I, I know how a lot of it is, is accomplished. I'm like, well, what I'm looking at isn't possible no. unless there's some sort of strange twist. There's not. It literally it is around his arm. And the way that it works... Yeah, we can't tell you. Um, is amazing. Yeah. It's, it, I will say it's a little knacky. You're not, you're not going to immediately do it, but the first time you get dino, you nail dinos, 
you feel like a king. It, you feel like Superman. You get like a dopamine rush, man. Yeah. You're just like, oh, that was like. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really so good. And the, let's, the, the whole routine is good. We always want to talk about the, the band through the arm. Yeah. But the, there is a four phase thing that you're getting here. Yeah. So you're actually learning two different techniques because that, that first shot you see in that uh, trailer, uh, and actually, uh, Mr. Pope, why yeah, don't put you it up again. put that up again? That first thing you see is different from the way the rest yeah. of Dinos works and is a really interesting secret. Uh, that is, to me, is also worth the price of the download. Yeah, this, see, now, for the next three phase, the next two phases are similar to the last one, yeah. believe it or not, where this just passes right through his hand. Yeah, and then this is the one where he does it one-handed. Yep. Uh, and the, the, so all of these are using uh, a similar principle uh, that, uh, that Joe oh. goes into. Uh, and, and look at this. You, you are seeing it for real. It is being wrapped around. There's no Joe Ryan fleshy things there, and it goes through. So the it's, download's really yeah. great. He's, it, yeah. Joe's instructor. It's actually filmed at Max. Yeah, it was uh, filmed at Max Tampa. Yeah. It was in Florida where we filmed this. Yeah, and uh, he, you're going to learn the, the four phases. Uh, what else did I want to mention about this? Uh, but the other thing that you're going to want to think about picking up if you are interested in this, and if you do any rubber band magic and you, you just not, even, not just buy it, just add the yeah. cart. Uh, grab Joe's rubber bands, the same thing that Nick just mentioned. Yeah, it's really important that if you're going to get dinos that you have access to Joe Reinfleisch rubber bands because they uh, they have qualities that make this particular effect work better. Well, they just stretch. Uh, they, they, they consistently stretch further apart yep. and will, without breaking. Yep. And that's going to be somewhat important for this where you want to get a lot of you know, yeah. a lot of wrap around. And not just this, but all of your rubber yeah, band listen, magic. Listen, if you're going to do any rubber band magic, grab, get, grab Joe's yep. uh, bands. He actually puts time and effort into figuring out what the best rubber bands are to use. Yeah. So he, he knows. I think that's it. I think uh, we're up next with you. Yeah, uh, number, number eight, eight is, uh, man, this actually airs tonight. Mm -hmm. Tonight is Sunday. Uh, this is It's 10 o'clock. It's oh, out Oh, it's right out now. now. You can now get this. There's a lot of hype about this. Number eight on the list is Christopher Carter Live. I got to say, uh, there's a lot of hype on this one. It has been in the top 20 for the last couple of weeks on pre-order. Christopher Carter is a mentalist, working mentalist out of Chicago. And he spills the beans, man, mm. on his stage mentalism show. You're going to get exactly what you expect from a Penguin Live lecture, full explanation here in studio. But you're also going to get some amazing performance footage filmed at the Chicago Magic Lounge and at some of the college campus shows that he did, uh, you know, over the past uh, 15 years. I mean, yeah. this guy... He's got the card. I, I have not good. heard of Christopher Carter before he came no. here. I think the thing about Christopher Carter is that we hadn't heard about him because he's one of those guys who's out working. there working. He's working. out there like doing big corporate events, big college shows, doing the theaters like the Chicago Magic Lounge. And that's part of the reason we couldn't get him in here. And, yeah. And, and why you and I were unfamiliar with his work. Yeah, he's grounded right now, right? Yeah. So he was able to come on out, right? Uh, now, um, something we didn't talk to him about in the Penguin Live lecture, and I didn't talk to him about in the Penguin, How did uh, we Penguin let that podcast. Happen? Uh, but we've, we've talked about it last week. We're going to talk about it again. And Christopher Carter is the reason that we all do anniversary waltz the way we do it. He was one of the first guys to really go, hey, you can turn uh, a double facer into an impossible object and then give it to your spectator. Yeah, he, the, Doc Eason saw his right up on, in the linking ring mm -hmm. and, uh, and took it from there. But that's not what you're going to get in the Penguin Live lecture. Let's talk about what's in this thing. The, there's so many good stuff in there. there Look, is there's a, how many routines? One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven routines. Yeah. The tossed, out, the tossed out deck is really strong. The three billet routine. The billet routine is really interesting because if you've never really gone through and learned a billet routine, he breaks down exactly not only how to handle the billets, but the structure of the routine so that you understand how to actually move into Look, it. Look, I've seen these routines before. Yeah. You know, like, hey, three people write things down and it goes in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. You pull one out, uh, this is yours, right? Yeah. Is this, uh, you, you know where I'm going with Super all this. Super good. Look, there's ways to just burn through all that stuff he turns it into a piece of theater, right? Mm -hmm. Piece of theater that's like com commercial. I'm not talking Darren Brown theater here. I'm talking yeah. about like, this is somebody that's just knocked it out for year after year, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean there's, there's so much other stuff to talk about here. The staple oh, gun roulette staple is super gun good. Staple gun roulette, so good. Uh, staple gun roulette is really great because he talks about doing a Russian roulette routine, but he w talks about doing a Russian roulette routine with real staple guns that it works 100% of the time with sure fire so that you're never gonna get hurt. And it's it's really it's really interesting about the way he talks about it. Where it it's a, I mean he tick, it ticks all the boxes. Yeah, you know, Pegasus stuff. Page, Ringtone, yeah. Broom. The, there's an animation of a broom in here. He's the, a mentalist. The broom animation is so good. Ring, oh, yeah. Get the listen. Uh, we maybe we're gonna have an award show at yeah. some point. 
Maybe. I, at the moment, this is lecture of the year. Yeah, at the moment. Well, yeah. we got we got Mark James to think about here as well. Oh, that's right, because Mark James that came, came out, out the same year. year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's those two. If we keep yeah. doing this show every week, we're gonna have to have an end of the year awards type of thing. Yeah, I right? think. Yeah, we're gonna need to have like we're gonna need to have like a viewer vote, like you guys we're in the chat, really like sending us stuff, and then what our picks, and yeah. we'll see how they marry up. But I can tell you for sure that Christopher Carter and Mark James are oh. going to be two of the candidates for election. Oh, yeah. Video. Super, Absolutely super good. Absolutely 100%. This is a, one of the best Penguin Live lectures I've seen in a while. All right, let's move on to number seven. This is Money Comes and Goes by Rick Lax. Really interesting routine uh, that involves uh, $1 bills and $100 bills. Some of the bills say uh, yours, uh, others, uh, what is it? Well, like win winner and loser. Winner and loser. It's winner and loser. Some of them say winner, some of them say loser. Uh, the bills are shuffled up and then they make all these decisions. At the end of it, you end up with all of the bills that you win and they have all the bills that they lose. This is a really interesting effect that is rooted sort of in some John Bannon, uh, Paul Gordon stuff. Uh, is it well, so not Paul yeah, Gordon? It's, it's a well, what it is, Rick's got this great way of, I really, I love the way that Rick approaches routines. Something, this, is, this is right in Rick's wheelhouse of I'm trying to think of this one trick where he writes on the back of all the pennies. I can never remember the name of oh, one. Oh, yeah. But he's got this way of just like making everyday props really fun, mm -hmm. right? And this is a case where you've got a bank night routine, mm -hmm. right? Because there's information that's hidden, mm -hmm. not in an envelope, but on the back of a bill in this case, yeah. right? And a poker deal routine, mm -hmm. right? Where you know the 10 card poker deal, yeah. right? And this is a routine where basically you force a poker hand mm -hmm. on like, who's going to get the winning poker hand, me or you, where you're... Yeah. Spectator essentially makes all the decisions, Yeah. right? There's a secret thing that goes on. So that's where this routine lives, which is why it's hard to talk about mm -hmm. because it's somewhere in between, right? Yeah. The spectator makes all the choices and they end up with all the losing. Yeah. So uh, they don't bills. get to keep. And they it's don't not, get to keep the money. Yeah. And it's not like they end up with like all of the ones and you end up with all the hundreds. It's a mix of the different bills that ends up going to the winner and loser. Right. So it's not like... Oh, the win you know, it's it's not immediately obvious. It as becomes how it a works. more interesting game to play yep. than just like leave me with the final uh, envelope with the hundred dollar bill in it, it right? It sort of solves the problem that a lot of ten card poker deals have, which is like why am I playing this and why are we playing this sort of contrived game with only ten playing cards? and one of them is clearly a very powerful hand and the other is just a loser hand. Yeah. So it really, there's, I mean, there's always been that issue where it's like John Bannon's power of poker sort of solves that by turning it into a prediction, but Rick Lack takes it and makes it so that it's not just like a prediction, but it's also a game that makes sense. Yeah, that's why, that's why it's so strong because it, 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 it lives within the two great routines and, and really, it's got its own thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the end, there's a prediction that you can predict uh, how much money each person will have. Yeah. Uh, and Rick has a way of making the person feel like a winner. Yeah. So it's not like, hey, you suck, you lose, even though they did lose. Rick does a great job with all that no, stuff. It's, and it, it's, it, it's, well, it's well worth the look. And yeah. it's only nine ninety five. For nine ninety five, yeah. this is a great little download. It's something fun to do. The props are just really fun. I yeah. don't know why, but they, they're just, they just are. And hot little tip, and then we'll move on to the next one here. Mm. There's some great prop money out there these days. So if oh, you don't want to yeah. use real hundreds and stuff, yeah. uh, one I've been ordering from is uh, propmoviemoney.com, mm -hmm. where you can get a bunch of great... If you, I don't know if you've seen all these YouTubers that have like millions of dollars that are yeah. thrown around. It's just fake. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, moving on to number, oh, we're getting down there here, number six. Yeah, number six. This is an exciting one. This is brand new on the top 20 this week. This is Cyber Secrets by Colin McLeod. Now, this is another collection of four routines that have, are, that Colin is performing right now in his virtual shows, and that's really evident. I've taken a look at this video, and everything that you're getting is directly from those shows. You're gonna get four routines. The download's about an hour and 10 minutes. And there are miracles on this download. We were talking yeah. about a card to impossible location yeah. in the spectator's home uh, virtual a little yeah. bit earlier. It's, it's really interesting because Colin is, so I interviewed Colin for the Penguin Magic Podcast and I believe that that interview was out. And Colin and I talked about some interesting stuff about like how he does work for television. and. What he's done here is taken in his really solid way of doing mentalism on television and adapting it for a virtual show. And what he's doing is giving you the real secrets here on how he's doing these things. Yeah. And it's, it's really good because 
Colin is so good at, so he's teaching you pre-show work for a virtual show, which I think is really important to know. Look, he's advancing what we've been doing for, yeah. look, there's guys out there doing virtual shows right now mm -hmm. that probably have a lot of different methods of things that they've discovered. Yeah. Uh, Colin is really like, you can tell, when we watch this download, you yeah. can tell how much work he is doing on mm -hmm. trying to make the best experience as possible yeah. for his audience. And you're going to, this isn't just like him talking to the camera. You're seeing his whole setup. You're mm -hmm. seeing how he gets things done. And I, you know, I got to tell you, this is some of the strongest stuff I've seen so far. Um, card to a possible location. Spectator chooses a card and yep. it appears in their own home under, you know, a tissue box or yep. something. How's that possible? Uh, card at number where you, your deck of cards in your house, number from another person in their house, not yep. your deck, other people's decks of cards. Card calling routine where you just deal out a poker hand. The card calling that you told nuts. me about, it's so good. So good. Yeah. So he's, good. he's really taking advantage of the medium. And let's not, and let's not, I, man, it's, saying pre show is almost the wrong word here. Yeah. It, it really isn't because it's just, it's already built in to the platform that you're using. Yeah, it's which some, is it's, what's it's, crazy. It's really new. It's, it's, it's different. Yeah, it's, it's a very. Look, I, I'm not somebody that's doing virtual shows. Yeah. Right? And this weekend, I have something coming up. I, I like that you say that you're a person who's not doing virtual shows and I, as you literally and are I, on a virtual yeah, show. Uh, yes, I am, right? But listen, if, if, if this was something crazy that I needed to set up, mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider it for this weekend. Yeah. But this weekend, I have a pretty big show coming up. Yeah. And, not a show. I just, I'm being interviewed on a thing. And I'm like, you know, the card calling routine on this download would would work. Yeah. I could make that happen. It's not a big stretch to do. Nope. And for the effect, wow. Yeah, it's right? a, it's a mind job. Yeah, he's a uh, bravo to Colin because he's really really advanced things mm -hmm. uh, going forward here. Moving on to number five, this is Resigned to Miracles by Peter Groening. And this is a fantastic book put out by Hermetic Press. It's edited by Stephen Mink. Uh, it's uh, uh, wonderful illustrations. What you're learning here is the art of getting duplicate signatures. And duplicate signatures in a way that you can use them later mm. and really, really mess people up. Man. It's this is a secret that was held close to the vest for almost 30 years, and he's finally giving the way the work on this. And this is, I mean, this is not something to be taken lightly, because there are some big names in magic that have snapped up this book in pre-sale because they cannot wait to put this technique into proper use. Mm, yeah, this is a quick read. Uh, it's just 113 pages, and what you're going to get, the book's break, broken down into three parts. The first mm. part teaches you the trick that you need to learn mm -hmm. to obtain the duplicate signatures, yeah. right? Because what we should say here is there's no duplicates, or I'm sorry, there's no, there's no secret writing, there's no double writing, and there's not gimmicks involved. And right. when we say gimmicks, we mean like impression devices that are transferring a signature from one place to another using special ink. Nothing crazy There, like there that. are some gimmicks that are involved in this. Yeah, and what we're happy to tell you what you might want to get yeah. uh, to before you, but mm -hmm. basically the spectators are creating the duplicate for you. Yeah. And then you're, by the end of the first routine, you now have access to a duplicate signature that they don't know exists, Yeah. right? Then uh, the second part of the book, I think it's about 12 tricks where you it shows you what you could then do yeah. with the duplicate signature. And then there's some oddball stuff at the end. I, actually, I think the ending, I still haven't gotten to the ending yet, but I believe it's maybe his favorite effects to do yeah. with, um, with the routines. Uh, if you are going to get this book, which I suggest that you do, this is some really fascinating stuff. You're probably going to want to grab some double facers. Now, if you're a card magician, you probably got to... Probably I mean, going to have these the, around the house already. The premium decks all come with double facers in every box. Well, not double facers, double Sorry, backers. Sorry, double backers, yeah, double yeah. backers. Uh, and a lot of the stuff he talks about you can do with double backers. So you, more than likely, if you own some uh, some bicycle cards or some uh, penguin uh, mark cards, you probably, probably have already some have uh, some, some stuff. The other stuff yeah. he's got in there is some blank face stuff. Oh, he's that's He's got some right. really interesting okay. routines where like the, the, the card is fading away mm -hmm. and like leaving the signature on the card. There's yeah. some really, I didn't expect like oddball routines in there. Yeah. I thought there'd just be like some really straightforward like, like stuff. Like card to do impossible location. Stuff yeah. like, no, no, he's really thinking out of the box. There's stuff with like a board and the mail and crazy things. Uh, yeah. Really powerful stuff. But yeah, it doesn't matter because as you know, if you have a duplicate signature, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, completely uh, endless. Yeah, there's, uh, 
there, there's a performer who's here this week who was trying to pump me for information. He was like, what do, what do you know about this book? And I was, I was telling him, and he's, he's going to get it. Yeah. Uh, I've seen people online who I know are, are really, really talented magicians who are looking after this secret. We so, don't have many of these secrets that have existed since the 80s and held, yeah. to, the, held to the vest. Yeah, this is, this one is definitely one of them. And it's really cool that it's finally coming out. Yeah. Because, because Peter really did all the work on this. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is super good. No. And so number four, let's move on. Man, we're getting towards the end oh, here. Oh, man. Number four, oh, this, this is, is uh, new this week. This is Discarded Aces, Aces by Inaki Zavaleta, uh, who also had a fantastic Penguin Live lecture. Uh, I still talk about that one. Basically, what this trick is, is the spectator can eliminate cards from a spread of cards. It really is a random choice. They take out cards from the spread until there are only four left, and those four cards are the four Aces. This was performed on Penn and Teller's Fool Us and taught by Inaki Zavaleta. And Eric Tate also appears on the video as well. Eric, tell me what you love about Discarded Aces. Oh, man. What I love about Discarded Aces is that it looks to a magician like a force, but it's not. It's a switch. And this is one of those things that we're like, again, uh, people send us videos all the time. Inyaki uh, knew he was coming to Columbus, and so he submitted this as a potential download. And we all looked at it and went, well, this is a force, because he didn't include the method with, uh, with it in the video. And so not only is it not a force, it's a switch that fooled all of us over and over and over again. And then when he came in and did it, we were like, wow, that's really great. I mean, just like, it's incredible that you can force cards like that. And he went, oh no, it's not a force. Did I not send you the it's instructions? Funny. It's Man. a switch. And I mean, Dan Har Harwin jumped out of his skin when he saw that. Like, we made the decision. We went out and filmed it. I love the demo for this uh, because in the trailer that you watch, there are uh, four or five like young college I age remember guys. These guys. Yeah. yeah. So it was so funny because we went out to film and we, we grabbed them. And uh, we go, hey, we have a really wonderful magician uh, over here. We'd like to show you some magic. Would you guys like to see it? And they were a little bit like, oh, yeah, like, sure, I'll, I'll check out some <laughs> magic. And so he does this for them. And then they react so hard. Yeah. They're just like, oh, my God, what? I mean, they're just like screaming, cursing. Where it, it's Those guys are like some pretty memorable spectators. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. That'd be a fun thing to talk about sometimes, like just some of those types of people. But anyway, yeah. uh, discarded aces. Uh, the other interesting thing, well, obviously, it doesn't have to be the aces because yep. it's a switch, right? But weren't you mentioning something to me about maybe doing this with some suits or something? Oh, like yeah. That? So if you watch Inyaki do it on Fool Us, you see that he does it with uh, a full suit of cards, uh, which is really interesting. Now, he does not teach the full Fool Us routine on the download, uh, but he does teach the basic idea. And once you have the basic idea, you could use this for a prediction because you, if you know the, the cards ahead of time that you're going to have them pick. Uh, if you want to do this with a suit where they remove uh, three quarters of the deck and the remaining quarter of the deck is an entire suit in order, you could do it that way. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things. I come on there to teach you some false shuffles and also uh, a particular type of control uh, that you'll need to learn to do it. It's a, it's a, but it's a really great routine and the, the key part of it that you're learning from Inyaki is the switch and he's so good at it. Uh, and he really goes in depth on teaching you all of the little things uh, that you could do uh, to, to do this routine. It's just really fabulous. Yeah, good secret to know. Slide of hand move that, uh, yeah, I wasn't aware of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's really good uh, for the price. I mean, it's 10 oh, bucks. Oh, 10 bucks, yeah. You should, so, I mean, it's a great this, penguin download. This is a great thing to have in your arsenal because even if you don't take the discarded aces routine and use it as a full routine, this is something that you will use to get yourself out of trouble later. Mm. Uh, it's a really, it's a really nice like transition. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to go into other routines and you want to get down to like just four cards or whatever, there's the possibilities are endless yeah. with this. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. It's almost like a four ace production. Yeah. Right. At the, at, that you could do. So. Yeah. So it's, it's almost better than a four ace production. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. Moving on. Is it me or you? Oh, no, I think it's me. It's uh, you. Moving on. Uh, this is number three. This is Think of One by Alan Kronzek. Uh, again, a $10 download that is really interesting. Now, this is featured in Alan's book, uh, but this download, Alan goes into all of the details on it. And this is really neat because what Alan is doing is a think of a card effect, mm. uh, but he's using a particular method that you may be familiar with, but he's using it in an unusual way to genuinely allow them to think of a card. It's a, it's a revelation of a thought of playing card in a really unique and interesting way. Uh, Alan has gamed out a number of different ways to use this uh, so that you can get to that card without it seeming like there's too much fishing. It's, it's an, it, again, Alan is so good at creating presentations mm -hmm. that when you follow along with his presentation, uh, it really feels like a totally free choice on the part of your spectator. This is a fun method to play with. Yeah, it really I, is. I, I just learned it this morning. 
Uh, <laughs> I tried it out a little bit. And man, uh, it's weird to think that you can divine a thought of card mm -hmm. with just, it's not even a move. Yep. It's, it's, it's just uh, one thing. It's just yeah. one thing. I guess that's what I can say. Yeah. It's uh, such a minor secret. It's not even a big secret. Hmm. The fact that you can go from that one little tiny thing to divining a thought of card, I've never played with like such a powerful secret before. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because yeah. it, again, this is something that when you find out the method, you're gonna go, oh, it's just that. But when you start to understand what Alan has done no, with that like, method, I mean, it's really what he's done is taken a method and then applied a system to it. To, it's almost to help like, you. hey, Eric, here, here's a method. Now divine somebody's thought of playing card with it. I wouldn't have thought. I don't know yeah. how. I don't know how he got there. No. Right? Like, it's really interesting. And I'll I'll be the first to admit I read this in Artful Deceptions and I moved past it. Mm. And I I, I was like, be a, I, I haven't yeah. read Artful Deceptions, yeah. but I would I would think this be a little bit easier to learn on video. Yeah, and it really is. Easy easy to learn on video. Because actually, uh, myself and uh, Nick Popa shot this, and uh, we, we took some time to make sure that we actually shot it well. And, uh, and he goes through and games out all of the different things that you need to know, and explains the theory behind it, and exactly the principles necessary. Yeah, you know, I've always stayed away from uh, like the trick that can't be explained, yeah. or any of these tricks that can it's, go off in a million different... This is not that. No, it's got a feeling like but, the trick that can't be explained, but it is not the trick that can't be explained. But that's why I think I liked it, because yeah. like, it gave me a little bit of freedom, mm -hmm. little, like a little bit, but like it's... it's it's totally within my control. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm like juggling nine different things that I got to figure out. There is a moment here where things could branch off, mm -hmm. but they're not crazy yeah. at the slightest, no. right? Very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this. Yeah, it's a 25 minute download. Uh, it costs 10 bucks. It's, it's really great. Uh, he, Alan's a pretty good teacher. Uh, I mean, not, a, pretty not pretty good. good. He's a great teacher. He's yeah. a really great teacher. And uh, you know, with his background in writing and uh, writing instructional texts, he really put some thought into exactly how to explain this to someone who might not be familiar with it. I really it. enjoyed watching him perform at the bar too. Yeah, there was, so, there was something about it. I, he, I'm glad Alan showed up, and we got some more yeah. coming from him. I, yeah, I there's, there's, uh, I think there's two more downloads that are going to be coming out from Alan Kronzak. I'm not quite sure when they're going to uh, come uh, out, uh, but there's a really interesting uh, uh, translocation, uh, not translocation. Uh, 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 transport, there's a really interesting transportation or teleportation of a card, mm. uh, and then there's a really uh, interesting card location uh, well, that is very, very difficult for a magician to backtrack. I'm looking forward to seeing that because I didn't film any of it and I don't, haven't seen it yet. But uh, just, to, just to mention as well, his book, uh, these tricks are in his book, which is currently in the top 20, and his book's only $15. Yeah. So, I mean, for 25 bucks, you get video instruction and a book full of other stuff, and you can get excited, get hooked on a new creator. Oh, yeah. He's not a new creator, but you no, know, he's been around. He's been yeah. around. But uh, moving on, we are in the top two, Eric. Top two. Top two. Say it ain't so. But number two Another this week. Another book. New this week. Yeah, we got a lot of books this week. Yep. This is Verbal Magic by the maestro, Juan Tamariz. This is a book. Basically, Juan, he got so famous out there in Spain in the 70s, he uh, got more and more requests to do radio spots. So he kind of put the work in to figure out could he perform magic over the radio so that the magic would happen in the spectators' homes? Uh, so this is a, a book that's a collection of all the routines and ideas that he made uh, during that time period that used playing cards, paper, mm -hmm. pencils, objects that you would find in people's homes, and he's created really powerful routines. It's a big book, it's 176 pages, mm -hmm. approximately 50 tricks. If you've read any Tamara's books, you're gonna get all the slights. Just jokes and gags and all mm. sorts of stuff. Uh, Eric, is this the this is the virtual magic show Bible? Yeah, it really is. Uh, there's there's some interesting things in this book because even though it was all designed by Juan to work over the radio, that basically means you can do it over a video chat or a Zoom call or a, or even over the phone. There's some really interesting stuff that he's done here, and, and some of it is very procedural. You know, you're having somebody do this, you're having somebody do that, uh, but there's, there's a cool, ambitious card in here. Uh, there's some stuff that doesn't use cards. There's stuff that uses a piece of paper and coins. Mm. It's all really interesting. And when you read the book, mm -hmm. you, the magic is being performed to you. Yeah, you it, could do the magic in your own hands while you're reading You're the book. essentially reading radio transcripts. Yeah, right? I think that's, so there is, there, there have been a couple of criticisms of the book because what you are getting is not necessarily 
a Juan Tamarez text, like the right. Magic Rainbow or Mnemonica or uh, Sonata. This is a transcription of those radio shows with a little bit of commentary. I think it's his wife or his daughter. Yeah, uh, 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 Gemma? Uh, yeah, Gemma, I, I, I'm probably saying that name wrong. And, and so, yeah, so it's, uh, at times, it's a little hard to read because when you're reading the, the magic trick, you're also reading the method. Mm -hmm. And so you have to sort of step back and understand exactly what he's going through here. Right, yeah, right, right at the top, uh, you get a trick right off the top that's really great. It's kind of like an oil and water effect yeah. that happens. Um, and man, it's just loaded with that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So if you're working on any virtual stuff, you, this, this is where you want to start. Let's backtrack to cyber secrets for one second because yeah. you brought up something that I really wanted to mention about cyber secrets. And mm -hmm. this is a decent uh, separation, yeah. right? Because this is for radio mm -hmm. initially. Yeah. But man, all of a sudden, if you start applying some of the cyber secrets yeah. to the Tamara's radio stuff, oh, yeah. the thing that Colin has done is is minimalized procedure. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, I'm just thinking about this now, but there's definitely ways to take some of the stuff in this book mm -hmm. and apply Colin's thinking to it mm -hmm. to just get to the meat of the effect. Yeah. Now, of course, all these routines and wands are, are fantastic. You do yes. them on the radio, you can do them over Insta uh, uh, Zoom, Instagram, whatever you want to do, and they would work. But, uh, it, man, it's, it's weird talking about virtual tricks yeah. all the time. But Yes, this is absolutely loaded yeah. with stuff. It's, it's full of stuff. Like, there's like 50 routines. And one thing that I'll share with you guys uh, that is super exciting is that not only is Verbal Magic out right now, uh, but Dan Harlan has oh, picked right. a number of his favorite effects from the Verbal Magic book, and we have been working on a project where Dan walks actually Nick Popa through these tricks. He performs them with Nick Popa, so you can actually see Nick react in real time uh, to the trick, and you can see Dan do it, and with some of them, Dan fully explains not only the procedure, but why the procedure works. So there, it, Dan has gone the extra mile uh, when this comes out. This is not out yet. This is a project we are currently working on. The filming is done. It's all in the can. We're just getting it ready uh, to release. But Dan has gone, done the extra mile because when you learn some of these from the book, you learn the procedure and you learn that it works. Mm -hmm. But what you don't learn is why it works. And the really cool thing that Dan has done with the video project is he's gone through to explain why it works so you can take those principles and apply them to your own effects. Great book. Yeah. You know, just what you'd expect from uh, anything that Juan, Juan has ever put out. Um, 50 bucks. I, it's almost like a necessary text right now. Yeah. If, you, if, if you're working on that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you're doing virtual shows, this is the way to go. Yeah. But that brings us to number one. Number one this week. It has finally climbed to the top of the charts. It's been here on our list for number a couple of weeks. Number one all week. It's not number one right now, no. but it was but number it, it one was the number entire one week. all week. This is the No Choice Wallet by Mark Mason and Tony Miller. Uh, this is a really interesting thing. Uh, it's a, a deck of cards is uh, shuffled, it's spread. They uh, bring a card out, they put it in the wallet, and then you turn it over to reveal a prediction inside. And that prediction uh, is a particular playing card. Then when you pull that playing card out of the wallet, it is in fact the card that is on the prediction. But the kicker to this is the great part. It's that the rest of the deck is all blank. The only card they could have chosen is the card that was predicted. And actually this brings us back to the thing that we yeah. talked about earlier, which is why the blank decks have been in. I kind of uh, was laughing when I saw it. I'm like, why yeah. is there a blank face deck trending in the top 20? Yeah. So it was there for like three days straight. And it's because uh, if you do, if you are thinking about pre-ordering the uh, No Choice Wallet, it's still on pre-order, but it comes out tomorrow. Yeah. So I guess it's not really on pre-order anymore. Yeah. Uh, you'll want to probably get a blank face deck as well. Now you don't actually have to do the kicker ending. It's no, you don't. Not even necessary, right? I mean, if you had like a one-way deck or something where can, all the cards were the Ace of Hearts. Yeah, or, or Jokers or whatever. One, yeah. Something laying around. It doesn't have to be a blank face deck. Yeah. There's a number of different ways you could go with this. But uh, the the card yeah. is different every time, right? It, yeah. It can be a different card and it's not it's not actually a, a, a four oh well, uh, you're right you know yeah, what were yeah. You there's say? there's uh, there's a lot of things here uh, that are going on behind the deck and I think one of the things to, to point out is we haven't actually held this in our hands but we oh, know yeah. we know that Tony Miller is involved in the design of the wallet and so you know that it's just gonna it's gonna be good because Tony really thinks through those things. yeah I think if you know if you're a magician that buys stuff yeah if you've bought stuff over the years you yeah. probably don't know how exactly this wallet works, yeah. but you know what's going on here. Yeah. You just whatever the mechanics might be, mm -hmm. you know who knows. 
But man, you know, I, I really like how the routine is structured yeah. with the prediction on the bill, right? There's something going on there where they get to read that, and then now you're you're you you know you've got the card where you need it. Yeah, it's. Right? I mean, I. Again, I haven't actually held this we wallet. We haven't held it yet. We haven't held it. We don't know the exact method behind it, but we know the people who are involved, and so we feel pretty oh, confident. Oh, yeah, Mark Mason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, like, Mark Mason is one of those guys who goes out and actually pitches in, like, real-world situations. Well, yeah, well Mark, like, we say real-world, but, like, in conventions. Mark so, wouldn't be pitching this if he didn't. If he didn't like it, yeah, he wouldn't he do like it. it. Yeah. Right, so, so this is definitely, this is going to be a, a good one. And I, I did mention, I, I, if, uh, I think it was last week, that I did see that stock was low on this stuff. And mm -hmm. typically with wallets, the production runs are pretty thin. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know we had that problem with the Razor wallet where like it sold out and then yeah. people wanted it and it took a while to get back in stock. Because you gotta make the wallets. Yeah. I mean, it's not like uh, it's not like you know gimmick cards where you can like do a print run. I mean, right. I don't think uh, I'm not gonna it's probably not gonna sell out, but uh, if you are interested, pick it up if, soon. Yeah. Right. If, because it's yeah. one of those, so it might just it might be a while before there's another one. It's it's up. scarce enough that if this is at all piquing your interest, you should yes. definitely you should go ahead and get it on pre-order or order it tomorrow when it actually drops. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, I think that brings us to uh, yeah, it the, brings us to the end. Yeah. Maybe we'll do some questions. We we'll talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about Penguin Magic Monthly real quick. Uh, this is a, a free magazine that comes out every month. Uh, I think if you order fifty bucks worth of stuff, uh, yeah. it, it gets it comes free in your box. Uh, every month, uh, there's a free magic. There's free magic tricks inside, but every month it comes with a gimmick that you can use. Yeah. Uh, uh, all kinds of different people have shown up in here. Uh, yeah. I, I, unless you've never seen the Penguin Magic Monthly magazine, it's. Uh, you know, this is uh, we take this for granted a little bit. This mm -hmm. just happens. You know, we do a lot of work around here. Yeah. But this magazine just comes out every month, and it's been here around for a while. And this month we get something from Christopher Carter, Nathan Cranso, John Carey, mm -hmm. Josh Birch, Dalton Wayne. You know, uh, Melbourne Christopher. Remember Ooh. that guy? <laughs> Al Baker, Jeff Price. I mean, this, Chris Corn. Great stuff. So, yeah. the, and it's beautifully laid out. You know, a lot of the magic I, magazines that you get over the, there's not even really any ads in here, yeah. except for the top and the bottom. Just a lot of great information. And of course, at the back, you always get the um, this week's gimmick, which is, mm -hmm. well, it looks like something that goes on a lighter or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, and then there's a little Penguin Magic podcast thing on the back. Oh, you know yeah. something about that. Yeah, uh, the Penguin Magic podcast. So this is a weekly podcast that I host. Uh, we're currently on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon. We're on all of your favorite podcatching apps. Uh, just search for the Penguin Magic Podcast and we come up, or you can go to podcast.penguinmagic.com where you can find all of our episodes. Uh, actually, uh, this week, uh, so we just came out with episode 50. We're going to be coming out with episode 51 soon. We, I can't believe we got 51 of these episodes, but I interview uh, all of your favorite magicians. Uh, we've had, uh, who, God, who have we had on? We've had a Jason England's been on. Kevin Bethea has been on. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> The Shocker, uh, had Shazam, uh, uh, Carissa Hendricks, David McCreary, Alexander Marsh, Kayla Drescher, Ryan Stock, and Amber Lynn, R. Paul Wilson, Nick DeFott. Julie Eng is one of my favorite interviews. It's so good. And uh, huge magicians. Chris Kenner and Lance Burton have both been on. Uh, this no, week, you need to subscribe. Yeah, you need to subscribe uh, every month. It's short. Every episode is around a half hour. Uh, also, I release special episodes whenever something of note comes on. So, like, uh, right when COVID hit, we had a couple of interviews with uh, magicians who were trapped on cruise ships with COVID. Uh, when uh, we've had uh, Paul Draper talking about different things, uh, when Black Lives Matter uh, really came to the forefront, we had two different special episodes mm -hmm. uh, with that. And, and those keep coming out. There's always like a, they're always around a half hour or so. There's like a little quick five minute uh, segment in the beginning that involves like books or tricks and stuff like that. And then the interviews are generally about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a real quick, easy listen, you know, just half hour, whatever you're, you know, when you're uh, on your way somewhere in the car or doing something, it's a real quick episode. Comes out every week. listen to podcasts, you're, 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 you got it. There's no reason not to subscribe. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's super good. You're gonna like it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, should we get into the grand finale? I guess that's it. Unless All there's right. a, Pope, is there anything we need to address? All he right. says no. Time to go home. Okay, let's get into it. Happy birthday to uh, Chastain Criswell. He's got a Penguin Live lecture. You can also see Dave McCreary there. And uh, happy birthday to Ed Oshman as well. Another Penguin Live favorite. And of over course, there. Uh, let's get into the time machine now. This is Eugene Berger five years ago today. This is his transposition with uh, two bills, uh, the slow motion bill transpo. This is seven years ago, the number one trick on Penguin. Eric, do you still do it? Uh, no, I never did it once. <laughs> <laughs>
Magic Live, if uh, the world wasn't falling apart right now, we would all be in Las Vegas at Magic Live. I would be at the pool, even though nobody's at the Orleans. There was never anybody at the pool at Magic Live either, but I missed it. Uh, this Today, we filmed with Mark Calabrese. Eric, you spent some time with him. Oh, How man. are you going to get a face tattoo? Oh, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to. Uh, Mark Calabrese releases some stuff in this that is crazy. It's been underground for years. But let's move on to it. Nick, what are you buying this week? Oh, man. I Well, I already bought it. Cyber Secrets. Cyber Secrets, I got some stuff coming up that I need to use. What are you buying? Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Discarded Aces by Niaki Zabaleta. I already saw it early, but I think I need to buy the You download. taught the trick. I know, but I'm still going <laughs> to get it because it's so good. You can't buy it, but they should. Oh, man. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Eric Tate alongside Nick Lacapo. This has been the Top 20 Countdown right here on Facebook Live for Penguin Magic. Next